I want you to notice and I want you to wonder. This is my title slide. This is the most important slide in my entire presentation. So I want you to notice and I want you to wonder. What do you see? What words do you see? Turn and talk to your neighbor. I'll give you about 10 to 15 seconds, the words that you see and what do you see. So notice and wonder with your neighbor. I'll give you about 20 seconds to do it. All right, come on back, come on back. So in mathematics education, we are always talking about I notice and I wonder. So I notice and I wonder, I notice the achievement gap has been about the same for the past 50 years in mathematics. I wonder why. I notice and I wonder, I notice women make on average 80 cents to every dollar a man makes. I wonder why. I notice and I wonder, we're constantly telling students you got to know the quadratic formula. If a train leaves Miami and a train leaves Boston, when do they meet? But actually, in actuality, when was the last time you actually solved any of those quadratic formula problems? When was the last time you determined when, when that was current? So when we go back to this title slide, which is my, the epitome of my entire talk, I want you to notice and I want you to wonder about the words that I hear and the reason you are not seeing them as of now. The reason being the, were, the words were already there, they're there the entire time, but because of the lack of color, because of the lack of black and brown, we only got to see what we wanted to see. So what we have to start doing is stop falsely saying, I don't see color, because we say it all the time. 51% of our students are of color. 20% of our teachers are of color. What does that mean? A student can matriculate through our educational system and never have a teacher who has their lived experience and looks like them. Take you through my elementary experience. The school board was all white. No one making educational decisions had my lived experience. I went to a school named after a former senator who said, America is white man's country and I'm going to ensure racial divinity. And in this particular slide, I think about as I walk through my school day. I saw no one who looked like me the entire day. Oh wait, there was Miss Rosado, the ELL teacher, and there was a custodian named Mr. Jenkins, but then I got to my favorite subject of mathematics, and I used to open my mathematics book. None of the authors looked like me. None of the examples in the textbook ever looked at me, looked like me, and I wonder why I'm here, but they did make it culturally relevant. They used to put Enrique's name in the problem. So I got it. When I was young, uh, you know, a textbook was like a pizza. The foundation was all white, but they sprinkled a couple things on top. But when we come to our conferences, the featured speakers are white, the keynote speakers are white, but we can find black and brown speakers for the access and equity strand. So I agree, we don't see color, we only see white. But I think about my favorite book in the whole wide world, Martin Luther King said, where do we go from here? And right now at this moment, we're all in this room together, but what's going to matter when we leave this room, where do we go, community or chaos? And it's time for us to stop preaching to the choir. Those who look like us, talk like us, like what we do. It's time to turn around to the congregation. Those friends on Facebook you stop being friends with after the election. Talk to those people and have those courageous conversations about what is going on. But some of you are going to say, Chris, behind the scenes we're doing these things. We're doing all these things. But damn it, behind the scenes is not helping. Publicly, girls are not doing well in mathematics. Publicly, black and brown students continue to get the most inexperienced and ineffective teachers. So it's time for you to publicly start addressing these issues. And this is not about empowering others. We're trying to change a system that marginalizes women, marginalizes the poor, and continually marginalizes black and brown students every single day in our mathematics classroom across the country. But then you're going to say it's hard, but it's not hard. Monday you're going to go back and implement three react tasks. You're going to go back and implement this open middle problems. You're going to do some song and dance. I learned this at the conference. This is going to be so good. But when are you going to think about some instructional models that really matter? But Monday you're going to go back and say, yeah, dog, this cultural relevant stuff is perplexing. I can't figure it out. I got to learn some more about this. It's, uh, it's not going to be on the test. This is bigger than the test. This is about preparing students for their lives. So going beyond just a test. It's going to start off by naturally embedding our curriculums. Dr. Thomas Carpenter once said, students bring into the classroom a variety of experiences. It's our responsibility to build upon the experiences they bring into the classroom. So there's six things I want you to do. Number one, 
find someone who does not look like you in terms of gender and ethnicity and help them attain a position like you. Change your discourse. Most importantly, learn something new. In your classrooms, I want you to do the following. Stop tracking students. It is screwing over them. Build curriculums from the ground up with the diversity of students in mind and publishers. Diversify your authorship teams and your executives. How can a lily white authorship team continue to speak to our diverse student population? There's at least one author that looks like them. Hold each other accountable. Work together in this. You truly care about change. Accept criticism and understand we're trying to change it for the better for the students that we serve and we say we care about every single day. Because in the words of the great Martin Luther King, when we let freedom ring, all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will sing in their old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, I am free at last. It is time for us to rise up as an educational society to change these things that we're doing and make the system better. We know there are inequities, we know there's things that are happening, it is time to stand up and rise together because at the end of the day, we care about somebody matriculating through our educational system. I care about these two and I want you to notice and wonder. I notice they're black and I notice they're female. They have two strikes against them, but I wonder who in this room is going to make it so those two strikes do not matter. So my girls can succeed in math like, like everyone else says. Dembeck says, we ain't going nowhere. <laughs>